everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Take a look at this quilt behind me. Isn't this a great project? Now this quilt has a bit of a history. It's an old block. The first known uh, quilt of this type was made in the early 1800s, I think 1840 maybe. Anyway, it's called the Brown Goose. And uh, although you know, like many quilt blocks, it has many, many names. But in honor of that uh, first quilt, we are calling ours the Brown Goose Quilt as well. So to make this quilt, you're going to need one packet of 10 inch squares. And we have used these beautiful Island Batik uh, 10 inch squares. And it's Heart to Heart by Kathy Engel for Island Batik fabrics. You're going to also need a pack of white squares that are the same size. So we're, use, we're one for one on this. So whatever size you use, we're one for one. So this, uh, this outer border out here, you'll notice we don't have an inner border out here because we have plenty of white to make that up. Our outer border is a yard and a quarter and that's a nice big six inch border. And our backing is four and three quarter yards. And I don't know if you can see, but it has, the, it has little hearts in the batiks and the quilting pattern is also hearts. And so it just makes a darling, darling little pattern. Anyway, let me show you how to make this because it's super easy and it was one of my favorites for sure. Now in this block right here, I could see, I can see so many things because these are half square triangles. And so I can see butterflies. I can see hearts if you turned it the other way. You know, I mean, there's lots of ways that you could utilize this block differently. So don't be afraid to play with that. So to make this block, you're going to need 16 half square triangles. We're going to use the easy eight method. And so we're going to make eight out of each set of 10 inch squares. So to do that, what we're going to do is we are going to take our ruler and we're going to lay it side to side. I'm going to grab a pen and uh, we're just going to draw a line side to side on this. Let me move this out of the way right here. And there's our one way and we're going to go the other way as well. So two diagonal lines and I slid off the corner. I kind of slid off the corner of this one a little bit too. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to make this one come in just a little bit. There we go. Now we're going to sew on both sides of these lines. And so we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to just uh, line up our presser foot on either side and sew a quarter of an inch on both sides. We're going to sew down and we're just going to flip it around and come up the other side. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come up this side as well. So move over to the other side, sew down. And this is a great way to make half square triangles and you will get eight. Alrighty. So now that we've sewn our eight and you can see we sewed them on in there just like that. And uh, we are going to cut this now and we're going to cut it first in half both directions because we don't have a line there. And I actually am going to need a rotary cutter to cut this, not a pen. So I'm going to grab my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut it in half both directions like this and then lay my ruler on here. Now this is my five inch ruler and it works perfect with the pre-cuts because you just lay it right on the edge. And then we're going to come over and we're going to cut it diagonally here both directions. I love working with old quilt blocks that have been uh, made before because I am certain that they did not do it this way. Uh, we've come a long way in that regard, but um, I just love making them new again. All right, so now we have eight half square triangles like this. Now there's several ways to square these. If you want to use the clearly perfect slotted trimmer, you're going to leave your blocks closed like this. We want them to measure four and a half inches. So we're squaring them to four and a half. So we're going to line up their stitch line with our stitch line. And we're just going to trim both sides like this. Trim, trim. And then it has these little slots in the corner so you can cut your dog ears off right here. And, uh, and I'm going to do that to a few. And then I'm going to show you how to use a regular square as well. Because not everybody has one of these nifty tools. But this is, um, this was a, I love this tool because it was like made sense to my brain. And you want to remember that too. If you have a tool that, that makes sense to your brain, it's going to go a lot easier for you. Because some of us will struggle, struggle. Um, 
to use a tool. And if you have to struggle or you have to put tape or you have to draw that Sharpie line, uh, it's probably not the right tool for your brain. And there are loads of tools out there. So just find one that works for you. So one more this way, and then we will, I will show you how to square them the other way. And you're going to sew two sets of 10 inch blocks. Now ours are matching. So our, um, our uh, 10 inch square pack happened to have two of every color. And so I kept my blocks uniform. You can scrap this up if you want and it would be darling. But because I knew I had two of each piece, I went ahead and kept the colors together. All right, now in these last ones, if you're gonna square a block with a square, you need to iron them open. So we're gonna iron to the dark side here. Get these apart, there we go. And I'm just gonna roll that back. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna flip these over. I'm gonna set all these seams just with some heat, relax that thread, and then I'm gonna roll these back like this. And always keeping my seam in the middle to the dark side. When you're working with a white background and colors that are this deep and vibrant, you wanna make sure that it, you iron to the dark side so that the color doesn't show through on the back side. All right, so this is my square, and this happens to be a block lock, but it will work with any square that has a diagonal on it. And we're gonna put it this way, and we're gonna measure to the four and a half right here. And we're just gonna trim around the side like this. Now, one of the things um, about this is sometimes your squares aren't exactly square, and so you just, you might have to trim all four sides. See, this one just has a hair. Look, look at the, look at, you know, that's all we got right there, so that's not much. All right, so we're gonna do this. Now, the trick with the block lock, it has this little shaved edge here in the middle, and so it can snug right up to that um, seam in the middle, and it, it just is nice because it doesn't go anywhere. This is one I'm also gonna have to do both sides. But the way I remember when I use the block lock on this is that the words always go on my background fabric. If I, were to, if I were to turn this around and try and do it, it's not at all gonna work. And so you'll know something's up. And so I'm gonna turn this block now and keep my words to the background. Slide it up to the four and a half. And then I'm gonna trim that off right there. All right. We got this one here. See how close we are? We're pretty close. There we go. Flip it around. Now it actually took me a long time to square my blocks because none of the tools out there made sense to me. I couldn't figure it out on a normal ruler and I'm not sure why, but it just didn't make sense to my brain. So uh, now that I have these tools, I square my blocks because when you square them, they go together, they fit together just perfectly and your quilt is gonna look a lot more neat. All right, now these over here that we squared with the Clearly Perfect Slotted Trimmer, we're gonna to want to iron open, open. So I'm going to set that seam and then flip these back. You can see both method works perfectly. And this is eight of them and I, we need 16 and I made some ahead of time, so we're ready to go. Now, this is the block right here that we're talking about. And what I like to do is I like to look at the pieces that are gonna be easy for me to put together. And so I know that these pieces where the color comes together, I'm gonna to do four of those. And so I'm just gonna take my squares over to the table and I'm gonna sew four of those like that together. And so these are, these are just little, you know, this is the way my brain works to put it together. You may wanna lay the whole thing out and put it together, but I like to lay them so they line up exactly. And so I, knew, I know I need four of those. So I've got one. There's my second one. And I'm sewing some of these from the bottom to the top and some from the top to the bottom. It's probably easier to come from the bottom to the top, but uh, it doesn't matter. All right, so now I have four of these. I'm gonna clip these apart. And then I'm gonna press these open. I just want them to lay nice and flat. There we go. So you're going to actually need 16 of these. This is eight, and I happen to have 
eight more made. So let's lo lay out the block and let me show you how this works. So I'm going to start here in this corner and with this block and then this one we're going to go up and we're going to go color up and then we're going to go color down like this. So it makes this little rounded curve. And then on this side we're going to do the same. It's going to go, only it's going to be opposite, it's going to be mirrored and so this one has color down and then this one comes with the color up to the left. And so on the bottom we have our two peaks over here and then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go, we're going to go color in and color out. And, and, and you'll have to translate in, out, up, and down for yourself, whatever it means to your brain. <laughs> That's, I'm a, I way talk to myself a lot when I'm doing this kind of thing. And so I have to make it, you know, I have to figure it out in my own brain. There is our block. Very cute. They look like eights to me. They look like butterflies to me. They're, they're half hearts. They're, I mean, they're just so many cute things that you can do with this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew this together in rows. Um, I'm just going to take, sew, sew my top two together. And then my second row is all still in uh, half square triangles. So I will need to sew those together like this. Fold it over. And then we want to do the same thing with this other row right here. So I'm just folding that on top of itself because I know it's right. And then I'm going to add these two to each other. So, uh, but because I'm so angly challenged, I'm going to have to actually lay them out and make sure I'm still getting it right. Because it's way easier to check than it is to rip. <laughs> we don't want to rip if we don't have to. All right. All right, so we're going to lay this row in and we're going to do the same thing on the next row. So two and two. Make sure they're lined up. This is a really beginner friendly quilt. It's, you know, your sewing seams, there's, you know, not a whole lot of matching that has to happen. And uh, it's just going to go together really quick. Hang on, my needle, my thread came undone. But we can fix that. There we go. All right, now I believe this is over here, but let's make sure. Just like that. All right, so these two together. And then once I finish a block, I put it up on my board, which is directly in my um, line of sight, so that I have a I have a pattern to follow for every other block. I always do that because otherwise I can get myself turned around so easily. Now these two can just go together like this. And now we are ready to assemble our rows. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this row on top of this row. Now wherever these seams come together, these are all uh, four and a half inch blocks, all the same size, so you want to match at every little junction. You want them to nest together. So I'm going to take a few little um, anchoring stitches to start right here, just to get my, um, my uh, needle on there, and I'm going to match up at this first little junction. Sew to there, stop, line up the next one. And when I, meet, when I line up, what I'm doing is I'm pressing one seam one direction and one seam the other so that they nest together. Uh, nice, you, you can feel with your finger if it's overlapping or if there's fabric in between. You just want to make sure that, um, that they're real snug together in there. And uh, then I'm going to add this next row to this. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take a few anchoring stitches. And I did back tack a little bit on that edge. 
and make sure these line up. Now, if you want to use pins and you want to pin all these, please feel free to do that. They, um, there's a lot of security in that, and uh, it's not, you know, you just got to do what makes you feel comfortable. I am not necessarily a pinner, uh, but I do. I am friends with a lot of pinners. <laughs> All right, I'm going to line this up here. And line up my middle, nest it. When you're sewing a row, it's always easiest for the bottom seam to face you and the top seam to go forward because you can manipulate that with your fingers. And so we're going to come across there like that. And just like that, our block is done. Let's press it. Now you'll notice I'm pressing from the top. I like to press from the top. I want a nice flat block. No seams that have pleats in them or that are, um, you know, I just don't want any pleats or any uh, folds in my seams. But what I'll do next is I will flip this over and I will make sure that my seams, like if I have a seam, you know, like this one, I can press it over to the side. Now this one right here has a little twist in it. And what I do, if that bothers me, only if that bothers me, I can clip this little edge right here, not to the stitch, don't clip your stitch, but just clip the little edge, and then I can make that lay over so that it goes the way I want it to. And this one is the same, so it's halfway uh, one side and one the other. I'm just gonna clip that. Now if you press ahead of time, the way to achieve that ahead of time is that you're gonna press one row this way, one row that way, one row this way, one row that way. But I have never been a, um, you know, I'm not too worried about the pressing part of it. I'm looking for a flat block. My feeling on pressing is that if anybody ever looks inside your quilt to see wh which way you press, they are not your friend. So <laughs> that's my theory on pressing. So um, here's your block right here. You can see how it fits into the quilt. You just sew them right together. We've got one, two, three, four across and four down. So there are 16 blocks. This is a big 16 and a half inch block. And when you put them together, you're literally just gonna sew blocks together like this. So we've got the black, the red, oh, a black one here. And you're just literally gonna sew them together in a row, then sew your rows together. We don't even have a sashing out here. Add your border and you are good to go. This makes a darling little quilt. I hope you use your imagination and you know, come up with some other uses for it. We're ever so grateful for those first quilters, you know, that started making these blocks that we can share literally hundreds of years later. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the Brown Goose Quilt from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you are not already part of the Missouri Star Quilt family, you can hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.